Friday. All right, we are live and ready to go. Welcome everybody. Uh, this is the next episode of Mental Health Awareness with JAWS Coffee Chat. Today is Monday, March 4th, um, and we are here with JAWS Coffee Chat with Jennifer A. Whitaker. I am EJ Oberkirsch of Oh My VA Admin Services, and we always like to give a special thanks to some great folks for replaying our shows on their platforms. Zach Clayton of the PAC Channel, Jay Stoyan of the Disability Channel, and Lawrence Wingate of Wingate Studios. We definitely appreciate their support and participation. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our social media pages, groups, YouTube channel, wherever it is you came to find out about us. But let's get started with today's show. Jennifer, take it away. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Another day, another week, and we're on the mission. Still driving the mission towards independence. For those who are disabled on Social Security, they may be retired or uh, disabled or other reasons, uh, like injured, that they uh, have a disability check or a Social Security retirement check or other reasons that they are not able to work or just have plans to retire. Anyway, so our programs, our shows have been talking about the different programs available, ranging from uh, rental assistance programs to uh, the metro and understanding that it's really a transit system that's a combination of different county transits and we even went to talk about how the transits are the name of the county with the word transit after and we went through the conversation last time with EJ about realizing it's even in North Carolina and not just in Texas that each county has its own transit even though they have some amazing ways to play with the words to make it their own name but to say there's a transit in every county uh, small town big city but only big city has the united program of it this where more than one come together in a partnership to be called a metro uh, Anyway, so now you can find your way to get around. You've got the rental programs and the direction to go with those to get your independence by getting assistance to pay your rent, um, to get that place of your own and out of your family or whoever else's house to be in your own place. It may have to be an apartment and not necessarily a house, especially based on the economics, but you're headed in the direction where we're leading you towards independence. At least independent from your parents and family, even though you would still need different programs in this system that's for those of us who are disabled in order to be uh, financially independent of other people. So today we're going to carry on to independence related to getting on the web and going digital. Many of you I was talking to maybe a few weeks ago in February or January of 2024 about the ACP program, uh, Affordable Connectivity Program. If you haven't been keeping an eye on the news and the trend, the latest on politics, then you may not be aware that the Affordable Connectivity Program is right now in process of basically it should be discussed should be debated and figured out how it can stay around uh or whatever side you're on with that but the reality is uh the white house senate house of congress all that um are delaying so it's the potential that as long as they delay it and nothing is resolved to provide funds for the acp program that it will be gone as of april and as amazing as it is, it's already March. So you only have this month to switch programs or you will be among the ones to, upon this debate and taking place and it just being delayed, that you'd lose your internet 
or something else we'll discover today that you can get with the new program. It's actually the oldest program that's been for decades, but totally unknown, undercover, in disguise, nobody knew about until the ACP program came out, and there were two of them. Now that the ACP's been done away with, people are finding out about the old school program called Lifeline. And Lifeline is a very similar program on a smaller budget. So it's saying it only covers the 999 essential internet service or one cell phone per household member that's on disability. So if you're the only person on disability, no matter how many kids you have, you can only get one for your household. Now, if there's two or more people who are disabled, there's a possibility that you can get two because it'd be one per person. But that depends upon where your income um, draws in the line because you have to be on Medicaid, SNAP, or other assisted programs that are for those that are 1100 or less per month income in order to qualify for Lifeline. But with Lifeline, where it's different from the Affordable Connectivity Program, it's not just a matter of how much fund is willing to cover as far as the covered budget per month, but even that you choose for it to either cover cell phone or to cover internet. Whereas the affordable connectivity used to be where you could use it for one internet in the household and one cell phone in the household. Now you have to pick which one you want the program to pay and which one you want to be responsible for paying because Lifeline will only pay one of those two. Now, when it comes to phones, it can be an old, an old school uh, cordless phone, wireless, we used to call it, right? Or the old school Ro rodeo or ro was that dial rotary rotary dial let's we'll call it rotary <laughs> rodeo, <laughs> rodeo. <laughs> rotary dial or it can be the old-fashioned telephone where you actually push the buttons but it has a cord anyway so you've got all these choices of the type of phone if you want it an old school wired one that actually goes in the wall at least the base if it's a wireless right or the modern day trend of cell phone. Now, if it's a cell phone, you have limited usage of height speed and limited usage of, uh, what's it, the, the large data, data usage. But if you get the free cell phone, it will cover a larger bill for you than it will if you get a landline, since generally, in order to have a cell phone, they start at a higher cost. And if you go through different programs, like the Xfinity program I have called Essential Internet, that's a program of internet that Xfinity made for those who are on low income that can get the same thing at a much smaller price. By going through Essential Internet program instead of going through just a quote, regular high-speed internet um so mine's the 5g my um wi-fi but i pay 9.95 a month well but that's a new expense because the acp covered it and the phone for me now i have to pick which one i want it to cover so using my accounting background i'd say let it take the bigger bill for you so if you have Wi-Fi and a cell phone or some kind of old phone that plugs in the wall. Whichever one has the bigger bill, which typically is a cell phone, it's kind of debatable between internet and a old school phone that plugs in the wall, but if you have a cell phone, that's more likely to be 50, 60, even a hundred dollars a month. That'd be a lot harder to afford than the 995 a month for the essential internet program through Xfinity. Uh, but whoever is your internet provider that you find working with 211 independent living program of your county or city, 
then look at their numbers, how much it costs for that internet they, they connect you with and say that you can use that's local to your area, and then look at the cell phone company. They tell you that the independent living uh, team tells you that you can use that's for areas local to you uh, for a cell phone and ask them what you can use for a landline based on what kind of phone you want. Uh, when you go to reach out to that, that phone source or that cell or landline, when you reach out to them, find out where the price is. When you reach out to the internet people, find out what would be your, your uh, bill, your expense every month with what you already have or what you choose to get based off what the counselor tells you and compare those prices to see okay which kind of phone do you want and how much is your internet to decide which one the lifeline needs to cover for you that is the bigger bill whichever one it is because it's a lot easier to pay ten dollars in my case than it is to pay you know sixty or a hundred dollars um, so the ideal is that both stay free, but that goes back to the political topic, uh, that's in a discussion between the two parties, of uh, rather the affordable connectivity program should be continued because the, the whole idea of that quote new program was actually a larger budget of how much it would cover of the old school lifeline that was created in what point of history <laughs> the pandemic <laughs> because people couldn't afford internet and from there they couldn't even apply to jobs as the whole world exists on the internet now so but it's a cell phone or it's wi-fi you kind of need both but let's say we can even debate between cell phone versus landline now right because think about we got houston in Texas in general, they regularly lose us power statewide. So in that case, maybe you could say us Texans are better off with a landline to say, hey, at least when it's when there's no energy and no power, that I can still call and say, hey, EJ, I'm going to torture you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but there are reasons because in a more serious way, that may be the disabled American citizen that say their uh, emergency plan, like let's say here in Houston, we do hurricanes all the time. So if we had our flooding that's normal here and our hurricanes and or them happening at the same time, my emergency plans are call my parents, ask them to get me, and then they decide from there once I'm at their house, that's about a you know, 30, 45 minute drive from mine, to then say, okay, if the Houston area is flooding, they decide, are we going to Dallas to my older sisters that's way away from the coast? Or say that there's an area that's flooding in an area that includes Dallas and Houston, and then all of us, both sisters, their family, and everybody else, we meet in Austin. But still, that I have my ultimate plan, which is how to you know, watching the news and everything to say, I need to get to my parents so I can do my first step, which is getting so whatever they plan, I'm right there in the same building to get in their vehicle for them to further plan what's going to happen. But when those times come, if I don't have electricity, how am I going to call my parents? The cell phones, they rely on electricity. So in cases like that, <clears throat> it would be ideal for in emergencies that I have a landline of some kind, whether it's wireless or it's uh, rotary or it's, you know, anything, but still that a landline of some kind. But then when you look at the everyday situation of how much we're doing on our phone, that's some kind of app, right? You, you just totally love these app world, right, EJ? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> so, rather it's say me coping with my iHeartRadio 
that's why well, I listen to a certain playlist when I'm depressed that lifts me up and a certain playlist that calms me down when I'm anxious or it's the app that does the assessment for me. I answer certain questions and it says 76% chance, 76 out of 100 chance you're depressed. And I say, okay, I need to call my doctors, right? But whether it's stuff like that that's managing our health or it's the emergence, it's the um, everyday activity of say, you and I talking to even when I'm remote and I do this quiet, this uh, podcast on my phone our whole world depends on cell phones for everything. And it's like they, everybody expects you to be able to have a cell phone and to somehow, no matter where you are on this planet, be able to answer their phone call. So in that sense, as the culture of our modern day world, a cell phone is better while you got shoes because are you more prepared about being able to function in the everyday world the typical daily activities and how people expect you to always be near a cell phone? Or do you find it more important that you kind of let that go and maybe even have what we call about um, digital space? Have you heard of that, EJ? Mm-hmm. Like we give Personally. ourselves distance away from the digital world. It's like a digital break. Yeah. Time away from the computer, away from the TV to just enjoy mm-hmm. nature or something else that's not a digital aspect. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay. Well, while she takes a break, um, sorry about that interruption, folks. I hope you are getting something out of this conversation that um, will maybe keep you online and able to uh, connect with with others and even listen to our podcast now and then. Um, hopefully it won't come to the reality of the internet being changed for um, the disability ACA, what she was called, it was referring to. Um, But in this world, everything seems to change now and then. So we have to learn how to adjust and be adaptive, adaptable. Um, If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the uh, chat or the comment section below. Um, If you're listening to us in a recording, we will definitely be checking back and and we'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. So please do feel free to leave us a message. Um, And if you have any topics that you would like for us to cover in the future, uh, again, put those in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And... um, be glad to address the issues as best we know how. Jennifer is a wealth of knowledge and um, can generally find out what she what what information is needed. So please stand by. Hopefully she will be back with us here in just a minute. As good as technology is, I wish there was a way we could pause this recording without stopping it completely. Again, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, It's the best way you can support us and allow us to keep bringing these conversations uh, to you. And it looks like she is on her way back. Indeed, I am. Now we got to get the surprise that I'm back. And what's next? I don't know. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about the reality of where you have to figure out which is best for the listener, right? Whoever's watching this or listening to it, we now know you can get either free internet or a free phone of some kind, but we have to debate whatever is going with all that, that, okay, so with my accounting background, I say, let's be the most financially wise by having them cover the lifeline program, cover the biggest bill. 
that will make it easy for us, if not easy, then easier for such a low income to afford more of our necessities, right? Because we can cover ten dollars before you know sixty or a hundred. But when we consider about the cell phone, that's going to range in say that fifty or sixty dollars a month versus maybe fifteen dollars a month. And then maybe you really do need to debate on which one's more of it's the internet or the phone when you go with a landline of some kind. Because, you know, like with technology, when things get old school, they're out of date, no one uses them anymore, the whole marketing trend, it, it just goes down in price. Right. So it's like hardly anybody uses a landline anymore. Everybody's switching to cell phones. Right. But then there's the, so that's the whole where everybody expects you to be available at any moment and always listening to your phone and answering it no matter where you are on this planet. But at the same time, it's the reality of what I said with the example with our hurricanes and flooding we have, that I would need a way to call my parents because we lost electricity. That's getting to be normal in February in Texas. <laughs> so we have to look at what's realistic for ourselves ultimately. Between landline or, or wireless or some other kind that has to do with being only working in the housing, you know, apartment or whatever, to the digital. But there's recognizing that if you go with the landline, it's more affordable. Um, it also will give you what we were talking about when this happened, the, the digital break. When we were talking about take, escaping from the digital world, where we spend so much time, whether it's our TV, it's our radio, but it's digital, right? And there's a lot of health magazines that are talking about we need downtime to be digital because we've got the internet to pay our bills, to have telehealth appointments where we visit our doctors when we can't get there that we visit them with, you know, these telemed apps and stuff that's over the internet. So there's a lot of access. That's why you have to be somewhat on the internet. But... There's also medical research showing that the digital world is reprogramming our human minds. Like, I don't know the insides of, like, what is the aspect, but it has something to do with uh, the thousands, if not millions, of flashes per second that you and I are experiencing by being on our computers right now. So we're, we're doing our job in a way that involves being here. So we're getting this how many millions or thousands of uh, flashes per second, but it's flashing so fast, we see each other stand as a solid image. But those flashes do some kind of damage, I don't know if it's long-term or temporary, but it causes something abnormal in the brain. That's why, you know, I've talked about with my epilepsy, I couldn't be on computers. Mm -hmm. Well, come to find out, my new condition of um, uh, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, my new seizure disorder, <laughs> after that incident back in uh, December, 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 yeah. November, November, November 14th. Anyways, it's a new one, but they, they have the same triggers. So it depends on what is the medical condition of the person who is disabled and listening or on social security that maybe it's what we say are medical issues that just come with age and time. But still, the, these people who receive these contracts and need these programs are typically people with some kind of medical or other condition that's with health. Depending upon what kind they have, if it's neurological like mine, there is a chance it's better to be off of the digital world and to go with the old school landlines than to be another form of digital. So the dollars aren't just what matter. There's the health because those of us who need these generally have something medical and we want to take care of ourselves. We don't want to see other people as so important and pleasing them and trying to be there for people in a way that we neglect ourselves. 
Remember we were talking about self-care last year? Mm -hmm. So going back to that, self-care has to do with giving and providing yourself what you need and whatever is left, you know, the time or space or whatever thing you give to other people. But you may remember my personal struggle not too long ago was I was always trying to give to others that I neglected my own needs. So this goes back to focusing on our own needs. Is it better that we space and have distance from the digital world and have a landline, or is it better that we stay connected? And that has to do with long-term goals and, let's say, accommodations of our medical needs. That has to do with what our doctors tell us to do or not do. So there's a lot of reasons to debate that would be a case-by-case -case best option for different people. But in the end, the, we're, we're going back to the calling 211 that's to get that independent living counselor and asking that independent living counselor of how to get a lifeline phone or internet and how to get internet for those who could otherwise not be able to afford internet. In addition to who is the provider that our specific community, whether it's county, city, town, but our area works with that certain company that provides the landline or the cell phone to that community specific to each of us. And then from there, when we go to call that certain telephone company, ask them about their process of not just getting the phone of its kind, but how to apply through the lifeline if you choose to use it on some kind of phone. Or just go ahead and get a phone through that. Like ours is, um, is it accessive or um, accessible? wireless or something um it's acc something anyways that's assurance wireless that's what it is assurance wireless that's what our community uses that's in a program contract with the government uh that is switching to the lifeline program now so honestly since i had applied back in january to get a cell phone using the affordable connectivity program they denied me because by the time it came around that they were processing mine this had happened where the affordable connectivity program was on a standstill that no one knew could use it that those that already had it wouldn't lose it till uh, april so i was among the quote new people so they rejected my application because of that program. So I have to now go apply again, but using Lifeline. So that's another hindrance. Our listeners, if they've already got it through the accessible um, connectivity program, they've got to come to do some kind of action, doing a pro and con list or something about which one is worth keeping covered. Um, but then there's also something more economic about the fact that if you choose to get a cell phone, you can put it on hotspot. Is it hotspot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hotspot. And it'll drain your battery. You can do something like, here's you and I on the internet talking. Well, if you're on the computer, you spend a lot of time surfing the web with whatever reason, paying bills or anything else. Well, well you know, my phone's ringing again. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Ah, oh, to have a landline at this point where she couldn't be interrupted. <laughs> it wouldn't be next to her desk. So another option to think about whether you want a cell phone or a landline. Um, you can always check out our website, Jen's Books and More, J-E-N-N-S-B-O-O-K-S-A-N-D-M-O-R-E.com. And uh, check out any of our other podcasts that we have going on and all the other little ventures that Jennifer is associated with as she's an author. Um, she works with Project Die Hard, helping the, uh, the veterans out there. Um, 
She does public speaking. If you would like to have her come and speak to your group, she'd be more than glad to do that. Um, Jennifer has a very vivid background, and here she comes. Back to the star. Yay! <laughs> I don't have to babble anymore. <laughs> babble. <laughs> So the, where I was going is that we have to look at the economic because if we realistically already have where there's so many medical costs or other expenses that we can't get both cell phone or some kind of phone and internet, we were talking about the hotspot, right? So in that case, if they wanted to get just one bill, phone or internet, It'd be better to go with a cell phone, you put it on the hotspot setting, and use that internet service that comes from their cell phone to work on the computer, whether it's paying bills, watching YouTube, doing some kind of work, whatever is their activity, but to be able to do it on their computer using that hotspot. So the pro is you'd have less bills, because you could have, in that case, the cell phone use a lifeline to produce the coverage to pay the cell phone and not even have the internet bill, but you'll be quick to drain that battery. The more time you spend it with it on hotspot and using, you know, your Kindle to read books or, you know, some of these things I'm finding out about that are where you can create new beings with some of these Apple devices. And all these other activities we like to do, at least for fun, you know, getting creative, it's not necessarily work. Okay, so whatever they choose to do with their computer, the more they do that something else using the internet on the hotspot from their phone is the shorter lifespan their phone battery will have. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. I, um, you, like, I found okay. out one program that I normally use on my computer my desktop i had to use on my phone and my battery went down so fast i was like okay we won't be using that app on the phone very often it was often. really a drain as opposed to usage wasn't it yeah it really was i mean it, in just less than a half an hour it went from about 98 percent down to about 60 percent in just a half an hour yeah that's like a percentage i mean you could have only lasted 100 minutes give or take yeah I had to plug that sucker back in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually seen where unless I use my computer's charger that is a high-speed charger, um, the certain types that are made for computers. So if I use that in my phone, I can watch YouTube videos and do other stuff that involves high-capacity usage. And it'll actually be going positive in the battery energy. Now, if I ah. use a cell phone charger, it goes at such low capacity, you know, the the units per second, that I can be using it and charging it, and it's going down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what happens with my GPS. When I start using the GPS, even if I have it plugged in in the car, it's still going down. And that's why I'm so old school about the Atlas and the maps. I'm like, so I'll open the... This is another way people can, you know, be a little bit more feasible and frugal and stuff. If you know how to read maps, go to your Google Maps or your Apple Maps, whatever. Don't use the GPS where it actually tells you turn left, turn right. But open it, put start point, end point, but never actually say go or drive or whatever that means the beginning the route. And just read it. And it will use a whole lot less battery when you have the app open so you see the map and in blue or some other color it draws the route for you. But you using your actual human brain read the map and it will use so little battery compared to when it's actually the brain working for you. Like you're saying, using yours where you actually have it talk to you and say, you know, turn left at this or right at that. Mm -hmm. Just by having a voice and I could say like, a fake human, right? An artificial intelligence of some kind that we call GPS. It, 
that being that's so artificial uses so much of our energy. Mm -hmm. So we actually need to keep our human capacity and keep using it to survive this whole world of 100% digital. They were kind of like going into over the last year, right? Because heaven help us if some <laughs> other country who doesn't like us hits us with an a electric bolt and it knocks out all our, our satellites. We're hosed. Nobody, cars won't run. <laughs> Internet won't, yeah. and cell phones won't work. Well, what will work? Uh, Can you answer that? <laughs> very little at that point, if you aren't a survivalist. <laughs> yes. It would be basically the whole economy shut down. Yep. Okay. And think about, about that. <laughs> I don't want to depress everybody. <laughs> No, no, you're right. But ultimately, that we need the Wi-Fi for some reason or another. But going back to the point about the drainage, that there's a pro that it saved you the additional, in my case, $10 a month for the internet itself to be, you know, some kind of Wi-Fi in your housing apartment or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing is it would drain your battery even though saving you money. So everything is a pro and con list in the matter of looking, the listeners looking at their finances and saying, is it easier to use this program to pay one and not have the other? Or is it, and then to tolerate having to charge the phone a lot more often, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it easier to save yourself of all that stress of having to constantly charge and it constantly running dead to pay that $10 for the internet and use the lifeline to pay for your phone. And so there's a lot of these that we're covering, but, but the pros and the cons of between what kind of phone to whether you need a phone only or some kind of phone and internet. But I think what people need to do is not just a matter of look at each episode of what we talk about, but take notes and work on one piece at a time. Because the order we present them may not be the order that that certain somebody needs them. That's true. You know, what if there's someone like me after that's already got a housing, but then they're thinking, I can get free internet? How? That's one thing I've always been paying for and didn't think it was free. So she's a case where... Well, I got this certain room covered. I'm not even worried about that. Yep. So whoever the listener is, whatever is their, their need, needs to define the order they pursue these. But the bills are the most expensive, but also an actual necessity to be pursued first. And work your way to the ones that are the smaller bills or are not a necessity. For example, my phone is one of the last things on my list for this month, my March goals. And it's among the last because in my personal case, I've already for decades been on my family plan that depending upon whether I was in college and I was on my dad's plan or since college and I'm on my mom's plan, some parent has always paid for mine on a family plan. So in my case, that's working towards independence, but it would not be defined as a necessity at this point in life. So that's why it's on the bottom of my list and not the top. Whereas in January, when we started this, you may remember the new news about me having my apartment in my own place for the first time. So there were new bills, but I didn't have new income. So those new bills were the priority to get covered. So as long as I got here, I could stay here. Yeah. And so that's where I even made my own list of uh, priorities, right? That had to do with what was a new something that had no means to pay and needed covered versus the ideal world of self-sufficiency and my parents not having to support me. That's the ideal world of I also have something covering my phone when I actually have no real dire need because if I don't pay it, I'm still in their family plan. And honestly, if I wanted to pay for it, I could 
be on their family plan and pay $20 to $5 a month to them to cover my own bill. That's much less than my own steam phone and service and everything else being 50 to 60 or even $100 a month if I had my own plan with the same company. I mean, you know how these pay in bulk and you get better rate per item. Anything mm -hmm. in bulk. Oh, yeah. So you know how like family plans of cell phones, we have all the different family members. It's a bulk. So if I wanted to just simply have that independence, I wouldn't necessarily need the program to pay versus the desire of the independence from my parents that is one of my goals of 2024. Self-sufficiency. But people need to paint what are their pictures. And this is a metaphor to paint. Like make a list of your goals. What do you want to acquire this year? What's required in order to acquire that? And based on that, what order do you do these? Like obviously I had to work with my mom to sign a lease and to do what took like 21 days to actually get approved and finally get the key to move in to this apartment. But why would I have in that transition even talked about free internet and all this other when I didn't have an apartment to give internet to? So some of it's logical in that sense. It has to do with what stage are we in compared to starting point and ending point of our transition up to independence. To me, it wasn't realistic before I secured the apartment or moved into it to give it internet. Hey, I want to give it internet and then something happens that we don't get the deal and then someone else is getting free internet under my name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't realistic. Yeah. But what's realistic for me may not be for somebody else, but that varies between people based off where our starting and ending points. Yep. Like, there's even some people I know that are coming out of situations like the one I've told you I'm coming out of with my mom. There's an unhealthy relationship and environment, but there are others they are at the point, and I'm actually, I'm kind of like counseling them, I guess, but it's just, you know, being friend to friend and friend help friend. But um, anyway, you don't know this person, but she is in a toxic environment like what I was under my parents. But she is in the process of identifying and realizing there is an opportunity to be outside of that, even though she's on disability. So hers, her stage has to do with first researching, finding the sources to verify and validate everything I'm telling her, and working with, say, a therapist or somebody else as a healthcare provider to help her, encourage her, and get her to seek these certain routes. Anyway, so verse four, she's got this long process to go through just to even start all this I'm giving us, right? Mm -hmm. So there are some people that'll be things like that that's the awakening and the process of realizing and validating because just because somebody said it doesn't always mean it's true. So taking <clears throat> that, um, how was the phrase, but you know, like a grain of salt that I say it, but they need to see for themselves what is accurate and what's not. But it's not just a question of accuracy versus it is the variety because of, like I've said, some programs, maybe with T-Mobile, some maybe with Assurance Wireless or other inter other uh, cell phone companies or any other kind of company between different forms of government and the private sector. So all these programs are some kind of private sector contractor that's accepting some kind of guaranteed fund that the government's gonna pay them on the behalf of the disabled or retired or otherwise unable to work community that's in a certain local area. So they have to research if it's if they're not in Katy, Texas, Houston, Texas, they're not in Corbin County and everything else where I am, they have to say, well, what's our cell phone provider that works with the government 
through the lifeline and who is our independent living um, organization by starting with the 211 to ask for some kind of help or someone who can help them become independent. And that person, that counselor, they ask for the resources for and then make the list. Cell phone, wireless, or some other kind of internet, or <clears throat> electronic devices because maybe they'll need to have a computer to get on the internet. So there's it sounds others like to, go ahead. It sounds like um, not only do you get to figure out the resources that are available to you that you've listed and helped them find, but also just basic priorities, which is something that everybody has to work on. So good topic today. We're about out of time. So um, do you have any other, I know you always have other things going on in your life. So any of your books coming out or die, Project Die Hard, any of that stuff going on right now? Well, we have disconnected from Project Die Hard. However, we are still streaming their shows on our channel, so you can continue to watch. New and old episodes continue to be produced at Jaws Coffee Chat on YouTube. And um, John, our web designer, is in the works in the background and will one day in the coming weeks be releasing the new website he's making where you can shop all kinds of stuff that we make, we have, it's all beyond just the scope of a podcast. Podcast is where you hear it. Podcast is where you see me and you'll see the website on my screen when that time comes. But for now, it's a mystery of what's on the cover and about to <laughs> uncover. <laughs> all right. Well, we appreciate everybody being here today or listening to our replays. Um, as always, we Mental Health Awareness is here weekly, Mondays at 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern. And again, plays on our wonderful folks that replay their shows on their, their platforms. Zach Clayton of the PAC Channel, Jay Stoyan of the Disability Channel, and Lawrence Wingate of Wingate Studios. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, and share the information to all those that might be of interest to it and check out our website, jensbooksandmore.com. Find out about everything that Jen's got her hands into and the writing and the podcasts and the all sorts of stuff that she's working on. So until next time, we wish you a productive and enjoyable week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.